in what I can only describe as, as an empire building power grab. Uh, I, I arrived that morning, having driven down from, from Seattle two days earlier and gotten my apartment all set up. I arrived that morning for my first day at work, discovering that this person had had basically uh, effected a coup and had taken over the narrative department. He was not a narrative director. He was from a different discipline and had gotten the guy who had hired me, who was putatively the creative director, put in a corner on a side project. Basically, he just took over the, the team from me. Man makes characters. Man works on game. That's all about characters. Like, wouldn't you think? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know how much of this story I've ever told publicly, and I'll I'll keep the names out of it. Okay. Uh, because really, none of the none of the principal people involved are even there anymore. As much. Um. So, yeah. L- let me say this. So I have a lot of affection for Riot. I have a lot of affection for League of Legends. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and, and I really was looking forward to it for the reason you say. Because if ever there was an IP that's all about the characters, it's that. And yeah. one thing I was astonished by as soon as I got there was to see how much they had the, the champion creation process down to a science i uh-huh. mean it didn't always work like sometimes you spent six months developing something that ended up not not happening but that's but, part of the high quality bar. when it well exactly and when it when when they did get all the all the way through they were each distinct and fascinating and memorable mm-hmm. in a jillion different ways and those teams are cross-disciplinary and that was some of the most fun such work that i've ever been a part of i had i had a great time um uh, there are a lot of, I, 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 I don't, I, I was, I sounded like I was burning the, the league community earlier. I'm not I'm players. <laughs> it, as you say, it's a very competitive game. I'm not yeah. a very competitive person. So in that sense, um, you know, I wasn't necessarily the best fit. I mean, look, here's, okay. here's the reality of, um, without getting too deep into the specifics okay. or throwing anybody under the bus. Um, uh, that was a moment seven years ago, eight years ago now almost where um where they were where riot was doing you know what arena net did just a couple years before i arrived which was Mm -hmm. first starting to go oh narrative is a thing that our players care about and it's a way we might be able to make our game better if we had people who maybe know something about it in the building so let's start building a narrative team and again like most studios did the first thing they did is they went do we have anybody right Hey, you in QA, I saw you've posted some fanfic. Can you write? You want to come do this? Okay, you in community, uh, English major, right? Even though you're 22 and just graduated from college, why don't you come over and join the, you know, and don't get me wrong, fabulous people, every single one of these folks. Okay, I'm not, I'm not slightly, amazingly talented, but young and green and no one prepared them. Nobody, they weren't ready for what they were being asked to do. Um, Uh uh, They didn't have the skills yet and there was nobody to show them. Mm-hmm. And so then Riot smartly went, okay, um, uh, let's hire somebody who's good at this to show them. And they did. I won't say who it was. It was somebody who, who was a big league fan and player, but but who had achieved a great deal of success in a different medium. Okay. Who they brought over uh, with the mission of, of improving this aspect of what they did. And also Mm -hmm. look, Riot already at that point was the most popular game in the world. I remember hearing the, (laughs) the statistic, which, which sounded impossible, which was at any given moment, 3% of all internet traffic in the world is League of Legends games. I doubt that's still true, but it was apparently true at the time. And it's just mind blowing, right? Yeah, it's huge. And so, you know, and it's in LA, it's in Santa Monica and, and so there were Hollywood people circling the place constantly mm. wanting to, um, uh, you know, honestly wanting to, to, they were sharks who wanted to get fat off of, off of the gold mine that they, mm. sorry to mix my metaphors, but that they saw riot and league of legends. There were a lot of hangers on sort of functions. Sometimes mm. there were, um, you know, there were people who wanted to be involved with the idea of taking this IP and do, making movies and making, Stuff sure. with it, you know. The multi and, and again, stuff, yeah. eight years ago, it wasn't like now. Where now we have examples of mm-hmm. where that's happened and it's been really successful, right? Mm-hmm. At the time, it mostly had not happened. It had happened a 
not to any great creative success uh, and, and, and usually not to any economic success either. No, but people hadn't mostly figured out how to take a game IP and make a decent movie or TV show out of it. Mm-hmm. I think Resident Evil is maybe one of the only things I can think of that sort of made that Arguable. jump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In many senses, right? Um, and so this guy that they hired, uh, hired a couple other guys sort of like me who were older, experienced people from games, brought them in, mm-hmm. and then was looking for someone to be. He he was the creative director, and he was he was looking for somebody to be the narrative lead, which is the first time they would have had one of those highest uh, narrative position at the company at the time. Okay. Um, and, uh, and he and, and a woman who's one of the, the most important lead designers they had, the two of them were the ones that, that hired me. Okay. Um, uh, you know, like a lot of people I had talked to Riot several times over several years. Um, uh, that's just how they roll. And, um, and, uh, but this time, I mean, you know, these people really saw that and they wanted that they were, you know, he especially was from creative entertainment, from creative dramatic entertainment. And, and so he, he, he knew the values that he had them. Sure. That's why he wanted me there. Yep. And, and so I came in and the morning that I came in, uh, the director of another creative discipline, and I won't be any more specific than that, basically uh, in a, um, in what I can only describe as, as an empire building power grab. Uh, I, I arrived that morning, having driven down from, from Seattle two days earlier and gotten my apartment all set up. I arrived that morning for my first day at work, discovering that this person had, had basically uh, effected a coup and had taken over the narrative department. He was not a narrative director. He was from a different discipline and had gotten the guy who had hired me, who was putatively the creative director, put in a corner on a side project. Basically, he just took over the, the team from me. Huh. And, and that was my first meeting was sitting, that guy sitting down with me and telling me that he was now my new boss. Huh. Uh, and that gosh, he, he looked forward to working with me. Okay. Um, uh, sounds awkward. Oh, it was, well, I mean, what it was ultimately spent the next year trying with some great collaborators. Um, I mm-hmm. loved that team. Again, even the young folks who were green, boy, did they want to learn. And they were so, they are, talented. some of them have gone on to many of them gone on to amazing success. Uh, you mostly not at riot other, but still they, they, they're tremendous. Uh, it was great working with them. Um, and some of the senior guys are, are some of the, the best friendships that I've made in the business. And mm-hmm. I still keep in touch with them and they're, they're brothers of um, but we went through hell. We went through a war, and mm-hmm. and and mainly it was because um, we no longer had. It's it's so important doing what I do to have the support of the person above you, uh-huh. um, uh, you know, of of leadership for them. As I described, Mo earlier right. has something done right. I mean, particularly once I'd been there a couple of months, and he'd really seen me in action. He he decided that he trusted that I knew what I was doing and that I knew some stuff he didn't. And, and he sort of backed away and let me do, let me do right, it. Right. And he was right. Um, I think, I'm, I mean, almost objectively, you can look at that we've done and, and what people team and with us have to say. And I think, I think it's, it's incontrovertible that that was the right thing to do. Um, the guy who could have done that for me at, at riot was, was disempowered and no longer my boss. The mo- the morning I walked into the studio for the first time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so the next year was me having to hope and trust that the guy who now was my boss, who was not from my discipline, meant it when he said he was behind what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I was wrong. Mm -hmm. It turned out that that was not true. And, um, it, which is a shame because. I learned a great deal from him. He talked a great game. I learned a great deal from him about being a manager of the team. It's just that he didn't practice what he preached when it really came down to it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Um, and he was going to build his empire if he could, and he would throw people under the bus as needed uh, in order to uh, make that happen. He'd done it with the guy who hired me, and um, he did it with other people while I was there. And And so we, you know, we all fought that good fight. Um, I fought it for a year, and... 
And I was also, there were extenuating circumstances. I was, I was commuting from Seattle. So I'd go down every Monday morning, fly back every Friday evening. And yeah. I had a young daughter and I yeah. didn't like, I knew how hard it was for me. It was, but I didn't really family. Yeah. Um, and in retrospect, you know, if I had, I might, I probably would have, uh, ended it sooner, but, um, but it was a very difficult year, and, um, and and the long story short of it is, the answer to your question is, ultimately, I was not empowered to do it, to do that, what you talked about. I wanted to. That's what we were there to do. Our team was ready to do it. We were leveling up like crazy. We had some really great folks who knew what they were doing, and we had we just did not have solid backing from our leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, and... And one thing that I learned from that, I mean, first being at Microsoft and then being there, I, I you know, you'll understand it as a Yankees fan. I think <laughs> one of the reasons that I that I took the job uh, with Microsoft in 2008 after having been at Pandemic Studios for three years is, is because um, they approached me and Pandemic had gotten sold. And, and it was easy to see how, because at that time, there was lots of publishers buying studios and then shutting them down. So it was easy to foresee yeah. that that was in the cards at some point. Yeah. And um, and Microsoft and a couple of other uh, companies in Seattle reached out to me. And my wife and I had always Microsoft being interested in me. Sort of felt like, oh, you know, I've got my, I've got finally, I'm done with my my rookie contract. I get my free agent uh, opportunity, right? And I want to see right, if what my worth metaphor. is. And the and the Yankees are in. Yeah. Man. <laughs> wow. Right. Um, uh, and who wouldn't be overjoyed to do that, Brian yeah. McCann? Damn you. Um, <laughs> I'm not bitter. Uh, <laughs> that's a very inside Braves Yankees. Uh, uh, those three of you out there who might understand. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, so five years there and a year at Riot, what I learned was I don't want to be playing for the Yankees. I'm not mm. cut out for that. Um, I'm, I'm not happy dealing with everything that goes with the places that have the most heat and that have the most, you know, that people most see as an opportunity, a place where they themselves can make their fortune. Because right. and I'm not, again, I'm not talking about the so much the people at the companies as the people circling the companies. So yeah, right. Yeah, this was a big perception. Thing the right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, like, I am not big entertainment co Inc material. Mm -hmm. I am too much of an iconoclast. I'm too much of a, I have my way of seeing things and doing things. And the way you can get the most value out of is let me do what I know how to do the way I know. Yeah. Instead of telling me, Oh, there's the cardinal way you got to con. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, you know, um, you know, or, you know, you come to the Yankees, got to cut your beard off, got to shave your beard off, uh, you know, cause the boss, yep. he doesn't like that. And, and, um, and that's not me. Got it. I'm not happy and I'm not appreciated is the other thing. Like they want you to conform to a degree. They are not interested in what you individually bring. Yeah. At least, at least those, those experiences, that was my experience at those two places. And what I realized uh, that after um, Riot was that the happiest I'd ever been was the three years I was at Pandemic uh-huh. uh, and the year before it writing Disrail Humans as a contractor. And so I realized I, I, I am not suited to play the Yankees, uh, to play for the Yankees. I should be playing, you know, for the Braves. I should, or I should, I should be playing for the Padres or some, you know, smaller yeah. market team. Yeah. That that doesn't have all of the weight of that um, from everybody looking at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, 